We're in module five now about operations with decimals, and we're going to talk about division first. This is 5.1a, estimating quotients. So let's start by reviewing the parts of a division problem. Here we have 100 divided by 25 is equal to 4. 100 is the dividend, 25 is the divisor, and 4 is the quotient. When it's written like this, we have the divisor on the outside and the dividend on the inside and the quotient on top in the correct place value. This is four ones, so it's over the ones place of the 100. This division symbol is also called an obelisk. And an obelisk is actually a blank fraction. Think of that. We've got our fraction bar. And the dot on top can be thought of as the numerator, and the dot on the bottom can be thought as a denominator. So 125ths, we have our numerator and our denominator, is equal to 4 because 25 fits into 100 four times. Did you know the long division symbol is actually two symbols? It's a right parentheses and a line on the top. When you see this, a 20, and then we've got our division symbol here with the 60 on the inside, this is 60 divided by 20. I want you to think 60 over 20. If you see 7,038 divided by 153, we've got our divisor on the outside, our dividend on the inside, I want you to think 7,038 over 153. Fractions are division problems. We think of the fraction bar as a division symbol. Just like 6 thirds is equal to 2, 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2. So think of fractions as little division problems. We can use estimation to predict the quotient of a multi-digit whole number. If we see a problem that says t-shirts cost $18 each, how many can we buy with $99? We round the 18 to 20, we round the 99 to 100, and we think, well, how many 20s are in 100? 100 divided by 20 is equal to 5. That means we can estimate that we can buy 5 shirts. I'm not talking about tax, okay? So we can get about 5 shirts with that $99. We have 100 divided by 20. 20 can't fit into the 1. So we ask ourselves, can 20 fit into a 10? No. Can 20 fit into 100? Yes, 5 times. And 20 times 5 is 100. We subtract and get a 0 remainder. We can multiply to check. 20 times 5 is 100. We know we can get about 5 shirts as an estimate. When we round numbers to estimate, we first identify which place value we're rounding to. And the digit to its right will tell us what to do. If the digit to the right is 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, it's going to tell the number to stay the same. Then all the numbers to its right become 0. And if the number to its right is a 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, it's going to tell the number to go up by one more than all the numbers to its right become 0. So, here we have 2,730,657. If we need to round this to the millions place, we look at the number to the right. It's a 7. 7 says go up. So the 2 is going to become a 3, and then they all become zeros. It rounds to 3 million. If we're rounding it to the hundred thousands place, we look to the right. It's a 3. 3 says stay the same. So we have 2,700,000. If we're rounding it to the 3, that's the 10 thousandths place. We look at the 1 thousandths place to the right. It's a 0. That tells it to stay the same. It's going to round to 2,730,000. If we're rounding it for the 0, which is in the thousandths place, the 1 thousandths, we're going to look to the 6 to its right, which is which is hundreds, isn't it? And the 6 is going to tell the 0 to go up by 1, so it's going to go from a 0 to a 1, so it would round to 2,731,000. But we learned about rounding 
in third, fourth, and fifth grade, so you should pretty much know what you're doing here. Here we have another word problem. The students of a school sold 30,381 candy bars for a fundraiser, and there are 247 students. So, on average, about how many candy bars did each student sell? Well, we can estimate 30,381 as 30,000, and we can round 247 to 250, and we ask ourselves, how many times can 250 fit into 30,000? So it can't fit into the 3, so we don't put anything here for the quotient. It doesn't fit into 30, so we don't put anything above the 0. But 250 can fit into 300 one time, so we put a 1 above this 0 and do 250 times 1, which is 250. We subtract, we get 50, and now it's this 0's turn to come down. Now we have a 500. How many times can 250 fit into 500? Well, two times. So we put a 2 above the 0 that we drop down, and 2 times 250 is 500. We subtract it and get a 0, and now it's this 0's turn to come down. So actually, I could put a 0 here, can't I? It's this 0's turn to come down, and we ask ourselves, how many times can 250 fit into 0? Zero? 0. So we put a 0 above the 0 we drop down. We subtract and get a 0 again. That tells us each student sold about 120 candy bars, and about 120 because this is an estimate. We're using the word about. It's not exact. And we can check our estimate with multiplication. We multiply the divisor by the quotient, and if it equals the dividend, we know we got it right, and we got 30,000. We know we did it correctly. And remember, as we get into the next few lessons and we're doing some long division, we can turn a sheet of lined paper sideways to keep place values in the correct column for addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. And it really helps in long division. So now we're finished with this lesson. We're going to move on to 5.1b and talk about using long division for exact answers, for exact quotients. Now I'm going to have links to 5th grade math chapter 2 so you can remember what was learned last year about long division if you're very rusty and you got lost a little bit during this video and you can review what you should have learned last year and that'll help you. It'll help you breeze through this chapter. Have a wonderful day. Remember to hit the like button and I'll see you next time. Bye.